2.2 notes. In these notes, we're going to be talking about how to graph a quadratic in standard form. Big question is, you need to know is how do we find the vertex of a quadratic that's in standard form? Once we find that vertex, um, we're going to learn that it's pretty simple in order to graph a quadratic that's in standard form. But the key is we have to find the vertex. Here's some definitions that you need to know. Make sure that you write these down, highlight them in your notes. First is you need to know what standard form is. So standard form is f of x, remember that's just the same as y, is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. So your a, your b, and your c values are numbers in the equation. So like an example would be 2x squared minus 10x plus 3. So the a term would be 2, the b term would be negative 10, and the c term would be 3 in that case. <clears throat> but we call that standard form. Next is the vertex formula, which we're going to use quite often. And you should definitely memorize this, which is x equals negative b over 2a. This little formula will give us the x value of the vertex. Here are some important steps for graphing quadratics that are in standard form. Please read over these, pause the video, get them all written down, and make sure that you have them before going on to the next slide. Now that you have those steps copied down, let's go ahead and practice graphing a quadratic in standard form using those steps that you now have. So it says graph and stay with the vertex is the axis is symmetry, domain range, and x and y intercepts. So we're going to start with number one. y equals x squared plus 4x plus 1. I'm going to use my vertex formula, which is x equals negative b over 2a. We can see that the b term is 4, and the a term is positive 1. Remember, that is 1x squared, so that's going to be a positive 1. So let's plug in those values. So when I plug that in, it's become negative 4 over 2 times 1, which is just 2, and negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. So the x value of the vertex is negative 2. So now we're going to take that negative 2 and plug it back into the equation for x because we know that's what x is and that's going to tell us our y coordinate. So we have y equals negative 2 squared plus 4 times negative 2 plus 1. Negative 2 squared is 4 this is plus negative 8. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, plus 1. If we add that up, we get negative 3. So that tells us that the vertex is negative 2, negative 3. That is the coordinates of the vertex. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here. I'm just going to make a little table over here to the side. Put this in your notes. And I know that my vertex is negative 2, negative 3. That's what we just found. So if I go to negative 2, negative 3 on the graph, I know the vertex is right there. Which means we have an axis of symmetry that goes right through the vertex. So we have this imaginary line on a quadratic, what we call the axis of symmetry. We'll learn more about this as we graph. So now we're going to pick some points that are really close to the vertex. So we know the vertex, vertex is at negative 2 on the x-axis. So I'm going to choose negative 1 because it's really close, and 0. So let's plug in negative 1 into the equation, and let's see what we get. We're using that same equation. Remember, we're doing number 1. We are not doing number 2 yet. So let's plug in negative 2. So our negative 1, y equals negative 1 squared plus 4 times negative 1 plus 1. That gives me 1. This is minus 4. That's plus 1, which is negative 2. So when we plugged in negative 1, we got negative 2. Now if we go plot that point, negative 1, negative 2 is right there. I can see just on the other side of the axis of symmetry, there's going to be a point because all quadratics are symmetrical. They're going to have these symmetrical points. So this is my point on the other side of the axis of symmetry that is mirrored. And we can see that that is negative 3, negative 2. 
So when we found a point, we really have found two points because of symmetry. All points are, will have symmetry in a quadratic. Quadratics are always symmetrical. Let's plug in zero. We love the number zero. So it makes it really easy for us. So I'm going to go up here where I have some more space. So zero squared plus four times zero plus one. That's zero. That's zero. One. So zero one is a point, which is right there. And then we know it has a symmetrical point on the other side. So you can see that this point is two units away from the axis of symmetry. So the the point on the other side will also be two units away. So we know that that point is going to be right there, negative four and one. Call that the reflection point, right? It's a reflection across the axis of symmetry, which is that vertical line. So we know that negative four, one is a point. And now we clearly have five points. So now we're just going to go ahead and sketch our graph, which is just a nice smooth curve through the points with arrows on the ends. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you graph a quadratic that's in standard form. And again, we're using these same exact steps right there that you had already copied down. It does want us to state the axis of symmetry. So we already have the axis of symmetry on our graph. It's that line. We always express this as an equation. This line has an equation. We call this equation x equals negative 2. Why do we call it that equation? It's because this is a completely vertical line that goes through negative 2 on the x-axis. If the vertical line were here, it would be x equals 4. If it were here, it would be x equals 2. If it were here, it would be x equals 7. If it were here, it would be x equals negative 8. It's a completely vertical line. So that equation, we call it x equals negative 2 because x is constantly negative 2 on that line. Domain and range, this is review from integrated 1. Domain is x values. So this graph will continue infinitely to negative infinity and to the right to positive infinity. We're only talking about x values. So every single x value is included. So we know that the domain is all real numbers. The range is the y values of the graph. So this graph is definitely increasing up to positive infinity. It, however, it does not increase to negative infinity. We have a boundary point. So this graph gets lower and lower and lower, but it is restricted right there at negative 3. It doesn't get any lower than negative 3, but negative 3 is included. So we say that the range is all y values, that's the range, greater than or equal to negative 3. That's your domain and range. X and y intercepts. We can see that this graph crosses the y-axis right there at positive 1. So we can say that 0, 1 is the y intercept. It only crosses the y-axis one time. That's the point. And we do have a couple of x-intercepts. If I really zoom in here, we can see that the x-intercept is right there and right there. So pretty close. Doesn't look like we have exact numbers. So we can call that maybe like negative 3.7 maybe if we're estimating. And then maybe this one right here, we can say that's it's just to the left of zero, so maybe like negative 0 0.1. Again, just estimating those x-intercepts. So we'd say our two x-intercepts are negative 3.7 comma 0 and negative 0 0.1 comma 0. So we have two x-intercepts because this graph crosses the x-axis twice. And we are just estimating those. Those are called x-intercepts of the graph. So I think we've answered all those questions. We have domain and range, x and y-intercepts, the vertex. We did state what the vertex is. We should write that down. But the vertex is negative 2, negative 3. That's our vertex. All right, identifying parts of the problem. A lot of this we've already talked about, but get this down in your notes. So the first thing is the vertex. Our vertex point is the maximum or the minimum point. 
in this graph, this would be the vertex. Draw this example in your notes. This all needs to be included. Next is the axis of symmetry. So the axis of symmetry is a vertical line which will always pass through the vertex. So like this line that I'm making right now is what we call the axis of symmetry line that creates symmetry. So let's label that AOS, axis of symmetry. Next are x-intercepts. So simply where the graph crosses the x-axis. So we have two of them in this case, here and there. Okay, so those are x intercepts, two of them, and domain. So domain is x values of the function, and range is y values of the function. So in this case, we would have a capped range because it only gets to a minimum or a maximum point, right? So that would be our range, everything in below it, right? Domain, however, is going to be all real numbers because this graph will definitely increase to the left to negative infinity and it will go to the right to positive infinity over an infinite amount of time. Last thing we're going to cover here before wrapping up our notes is how to identify different functions. So it's very important that you can determine whether functions are either linear, quadratic, or neither. A function is linear when you have y and x. A function is quadratic when you have y and x squared. It is neither when you don't have either of these. If you have neither of those, then it is neither. So, with that said, let's look at a... Uh, B, C, and D here. So A example, you can see we have Y and we have X. That was going to be, let me erase this, linear. Next one, we have Y and we have X squared. Like we said, that one is going to be quadratic. So it's going to be a curve U-shaped graph. Linear is just a straight line. Next one, we have y and we have x cubed, so this one is neither. And finally, last one, we have y and we have x squared again, so that one is quadratic, which will be the parabola-shaped graph. Or it could be opening down as well. All right. Summary time. So take what we have learned in these notes and give me a short paragraph summary. Three to four complete sentences talking about all the topics we have covered in these notes.